All right, welcome back to Lua for Beginners. This time we'll be going over comparisons and decision making in Lua. So you'll find that this is actually pretty simpler or pretty similar to the way functions work. But the difference being we instead of just reusing code, we get to run code based on some data. So easiest way to do it is just to start working on it. So let's make a couple more variables. Let's give them some random numbers. Apple equals five, then equals something like 10. All right. So now we're going to start making the decisions. So the way we make decisions is by using the word if. If is a pretty universal word in programming. It will let us select what type of code to run based on, in this example, these variables. So let's say if Apple is eight. So the way we're gonna say is eight is we're not gonna use an equal sign like you'd expect. We're actually gonna use two equal signs right next to each other, and then the number eight. And the reason for this is because if we just used one equal sign, it would be the same exact thing as giving it the value of eight. But we don't want to make it eight. We don't want to make Apple eight. We want to see if it is eight. So we put two equal signs next to each other, just like that. Then after the eight, you're going to put a space and the word then, T-H-E-N, just like that. And now, we have pretty much the same setup as a function. So we're going to skip a line and do end, just like that. And now anything between this then and this end is its own code, just like in a function. So let's put print and put in some text. Apple is 8, just like that. And we'll run it. And you can see that nothing happened, even though, oops, even though we have all of this written here, there's nothing coming out of it because Apple is not eight. And unlike functions, we don't need to call this. This isn't something that's re that's going to be reused, as I said before. This is run just when you start the program, but the only reason we don't see this is because Apple's not eight. So let's make it appear. Apple is five then. And then we'll say Apple is five, like that. And there you go, Apple is five. So what if we want to do something if Apple is not five? Well, there's two ways we can do this. Probably the easiest way is to write an else. So after all this code for the in, or for the if, but before the end, we're going to write else. And then we're going to write print. And then this, this will be another sort of function deal where everything starting from the end of the else and then to the beginning of the end is its own code. So we'll print apple is not five. And let's make that true. So let's, let's change apple to six. And we'll run that. You can see it says Apple is not five. That's because Apple's not five. There's also another way to do it. So if we take a look up here, this is the comparison operator, the equality operator. If we change the first equal sign to an exclamation mark, or sorry, to a tilde, which is, if you hold the shift key on my keyboard, it's right above the tab key. It's on the, the upper left hand side of your keyboard. If Apple is tilde equal sign five, then Apple is not five, just like that. And you see that works. That's because this mean, this doesn't mean it's looking for if the two things are equal anymore. It's looking for the two things are not equal. So if Apple's not five, we can also do greater than, 
and less than. So greater than is just the greater than symbol. So if apple is greater than five, which it is, it's six, then we'll say apple is greater than five. All right, you can do the same thing with less than. And we shouldn't see anything here because it's not less than five, it is greater than five. We can also do greater than or equal to. So if apple is greater than or equal to, so greater than sign and then one equal sign, doesn't have to be two this time. And we should see apple is greater than five. The uh, We can also do less than, of course, less than or equal to. The thing here is the equal sign always on the right hand side. So if we do equal sign less than sign, that's not going to work. You can see it's underlining it for me. So it always has to be on the right hand side. And we shouldn't see anything here. Okay, what if we wanted to check for multiple conditions? What if we wanted to check for... What if we, what, so if apple is 5, do this, but if apple is 6, do a different thing. So let's change this back to equal to five. So apple is equal to five, just like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use another keyword. We're gonna use something called else if, and it's all one word, but it's spelt as if it's two. So else if, just like that with no space. And then we'll put our little check here. So apple double equals sign six, then, and then we have our own code just like a function. We can print apple is six, if I could spell it right. There we go. So let's run that. And we can see that even though we have this code here, it bypasses that because it's not five. And then it checks here, apple is six. So it runs that and we see it display down here. All right, so we've gone over if and else if. Let's go over some more variable types. So there are variable types called Booleans and they hold either true or false. So let's give ourselves a Boolean. So my Boolean equals true, just like that. So if I wanted to print out the type of my Boolean, remember we did this in the first tutorial, second episode, then we should see Boolean and then apple is six. So here's a sort of side note. I don't want this code to run anymore but just for the time being. So I don't want to delete it. I want to stop it from running. So what I can do is something called commenting it out. So if we type a double dash like this, dash dash, and then a double open square bracket, just like that, you'll see that everything goes green after that. And it actually gives me a little error down here. This is because this is turned into what's called a comment. Comments are made for two reasons. One, to explain your code. If you do something that's maybe a little bit weird, maybe you need to look up the documentation, then you, you could put a comment there to explain what's going on. And another reason to use comments is to take code out temporarily without actually deleting it. So that's what we're doing here. This is called a multi-line comment. That means I've started the comment up here and it won't stop until I end it. So the way I end it is the same way I started it, but in reverse. So two closing square brackets and then two dashes, just like that. All right, we can also comment out just one line. So the only difference here is we don't do the square brackets. So two dashes just like that, it'll make a comment until the end of the line. So right here, this will run. We'll see hello here. 
and nothing else. Okay. So now that we've gone over comments, we're just going to work with booleans up here real quick. So the way that if works is it actually turns this into a boolean. And if it's true, then it runs it. And if it's not, it doesn't. So I'll just demonstrate that real quick. So if true, we can just put true there. It's pretty simple. Then print it was true. End. And we don't need this anymore, so I'll comment it out. See, it was true. Now I'll put false here. And nothing comes up. So the reason this works is because we've basically done the work for the machine. We've already, instead of having to figure out if something was true or false, we've just told it that it's true. We can also store if something is true. So let's do one equals one, just like that, right? So this is doing what we did down here, but it's storing the result in a variable instead of just doing it in the if. And we can use this right here under my boolean. So if my boolean, then. And you'll see that it runs. All right. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. We've gone over booleans and decision making. Uh, next time we will be doing a little bit of Boolean math. It'll be a quick episode, but I didn't want to put it in this one because it's a little bit, a little bit too much for one episode. So I will see you then.